Hi guys, Andrea Mills here. Today I want to share with you some of my favorite herb books and my most visited websites. My theme for the month is healing at home and I was thinking to myself, you know, who knows how things go. I want to make sure that I get the most important things that I can out right away so that um, you guys can get on your way with or without me. So I thought sharing with you some of my favorite books would be a great place to start. I want to say ahead of time that pretty much everyone that I ever read I have disagreements with on um, methods or belief systems or whatever but to me that's kind of not irrelevant in the big scheme of things but if you only read or listen to people that you agree with then it makes a very small number of people you can f learn from so I disregard um, differing worldviews and all those kinds of things when I am reading it. I take what I can from what they have to share and I just don't worry about it. So I just wanted to say that before I get started because everyone that I'm going to share with you probably has a different belief system than I do and I don't know why I felt the need to say that. So the first one I'm going to share is um, Herbal Home Health Care by Dr. John R. Christopher and Dr. Christopher was I think he died in the 80s, but he was an herbalist who actually lived for a lot of his life in my home state of Wyoming. For some people, he's kind of a, one of the pioneers of modern herbal medicine, and I really enjoyed his gentle way of teaching and speaking, and he wrote a lot of different books. I have quite a few books, but I thought this is a good one. I'll pick something out here. Like here, we have lice, and it tells you whatever ailment and then he talks a little bit about it and then gives you ideas of different remedies for it. Um, we've got leukemia, itch, jaundice, hiccups, hearing, swollen glands, earaches, um, diabetes, cuts and abrasions, just everything um, everything's just in alphabetical order by ailment and then he gives you the treatments for it. And then at the back, I believe, let me look. Yeah, he's got in the back his herbal formulas. And these are kind of like recipes for making different things that he'll mention in there. Um, like the hawthorn berry heart syrup right here. He tells you you need hawthorn berry and glycerin or grape brandy base. And then it gives you the directions for how to make it. This book does not tell you how much of each um, herb to use generally it's um, going to be equal amounts by weight. So when you when you do an herb formula or a recipe, um, usually all the ingredients are weight based, not like cups or teaspoons or anything like that. So you want to weigh them out. And then if there's something that um, you want more of, then you'll add more parts of that. So usually you do like equal, like let's say one ounce of each thing, but um, maybe you want more of this herb because of whatever effect it has. So you might put two or three or four parts of that and one part of everything else or something like that. So this is a very good um, book just as a basic covering every everything that you might run into at home without being too overwhelming in size. I have some of his books that are giant and when I first got them I'm like I don't even know how to comprehend what I am looking at. Which reminds me that one of the most important things that I think you can do when you're first learning about herbs is, and I actually need to practice some of this myself, is you're going to run into terms that you may have never heard before and it's like if you don't know the lingo then you're kind of lost and that is just like what I'm thinking is the action that herbs take or have. So like you might see terms like diaphoretic or adaptogenic or um, emetic or analgesic and you'll be like I don't know what that means and so it's helpful um, if you can practice what each of those terms mean. Maybe make a flashcard with um, a list of those kinds of words. I'll try to put up if I can a list of those kinds of words or a link to one so that you can see what the terms are and what they mean and maybe make some flashcards to familiarize yourself with them if that's something that you're interested in learning. Um, the next book that I have was it's called Every Woman's Herbal and it's by Dr. Christopher also and he actually had not finished this book before he died and so Kathy Galidi I think it is finished the book and it was really helpful. It has a lot of um, 
just herbal stories and formulas and ideas for all sorts of hormonal and women's issues. I probably should read that myself right now, reread it again. Um, I remember there was like even directions like for making um, your own feminine products and things like that. So I thought that was neat. So this was a good book. My absolute favorite author for herb books and there's a ton out there. So this is just my opinion because this is what I like and I'm familiar with. But I really love um, Rachel Weaver and it's Rachel Weaver MH because she's a master herbalist. She actually um, became a master herbalist through Dr. Christopher's School of Natural Healing. Um, I took a family herbalist course through the School of Natural Healing, which is how I learned about him. When I wanted to learn about herbs myself, I didn't know where to start. So I just was looking online and I found this school that I could do correspondence work with. So I took the course and got on my road to learning about these kinds of things. But I really love Rachel Weaver's books. She has, I think, nine kids. And I might be making that up. She has a lot of kids. <laughs> Anyways. And so all of her books are very um, story-based. Like, this, this one's called Backyard Pharmacy. And it's all about plants that you are very likely to find just growing outside in your yard and how you can use them. But she'll, like here, how to make a common mallow poultice. And she will tell a story a lot of times about a time that they actually used it or a story she knows of someone who had something um, here they use it for a uterine infection and so she tells all about Susan and what she dealt with and I really just like that relational aspect because I'm a, I'm a very relational person and so I like hearing people's stories of how they um, actually lived this in real life so she has four books that I know of so it's there's Backyard Pharmacy this was her first book called Be Your Own Doctor and yeah, there's a picture of our family there. So, and she's got Be Your Own Doctor 2 and Be Your Child's Pediatrician. And I actually haven't read this one yet, so I'm excited to do that because I haven't had it for very long and I just haven't got to reading that one. But I thought I would show it just in case it's something that you guys might be interested in. Before I leave off talking about Dr. Christopher, I'm going to tell you that. I put a playlist here on my channel of Dr. Christopher's herb lectures. This was a set that I had that I listened to several times. Then I loaned it out to someone and I never got it back. So um, I was going to buy a new one, but then I found that someone else had already uploaded them on YouTube. So I made a playlist here on my own channel so that you guys could find those easily and um, listen to those if you want and I think each one has the basic idea of what he's talking about listed in the title. Dr. Christopher used to do, he would speak at places and do lectures and teach people about how to use herbs themselves so that's what these are as recordings from those um, lectures that he gave. So from um, mom school if you if you're one of my old friends you know that on Mondays I have a group of mom friends that come over and we have what we call mom school and we do um, we learn about something with a DVD series or an audio series and our kids play while we listen and visit with each other and we just finished our cooking class so this coming Monday I think it's March 13th we're gonna start doing this Dr. Christopher Herb series for our mom school so if you want to be with us in spirit you could watch one um, video per week or listen to one lecture per week on Monday afternoons. We meet Monday at two o'clock at my house. So that two o'clock um, mountain time is what we are. So um, I'm not going to be like live doing anything, but I will just tell you that in case in spirit you want to be there with us and watch them at the same time at your house. Um, this book is called Making Plant Medicine by Rico Czech. I think that's how you say it. I'm not good. I say these names in my mind when I read but then when I sit down here to say them out loud to you guys, I think I really don't know if that's how you pronounce them and I might be really butchering them badly. But I really like his sense of humor and he is much more precise in how he makes things. So if you're a person who really wants um, really clear cut directions of do this much by weight and you know figuring out all the math of something, then this is the guy that you want to listen to. I'm more of a throw everything in the pot and it'll be 
fine kind of a person. The last book I'm going to share with you is called um, A Mother's Guide to Herbal Extracts, Saving Tristan um, by Kathy Garber. And you can get this book for free on her website, savingtristan.com. I think you have to pay shipping like $3 or something like that, but it's a really good book. She wrote this. She tells about her son, Tristan, who um, had badly damaged kidneys when he was little and they were going to put him on dialysis and get um, him on the kidney trans, or maybe he was on the kidney transplant list, I can't remember. But she used herbs, that's when she started learning about herbs. So she used herbs and was actually able to save his kidneys and he did not, I don't believe, had to go on dialysis and um, actually recovered from what he was suffering from. And she now sells um, herbal products and of course writes books and does things all about herbs. And I think her company name is called Mountain Meadow Herbs. But I really enjoyed her book also, especially hearing that personal story in the beginning. Then she's got her own formulas and things in here that she shares with you on all sorts of different ailments. And um, it's, a, it's a good book. Then the websites that I want to mention already, I said about savingtristan.com. That's where you can get her book. Whenever I am dealing with a problem <laughs> that I want to figure out, I do a lot of research. It's just, this is a topic I really enjoy. I enjoy learning about health. I enjoy learning about nutrition. I am not an alarmist and I'm not a purist. So I am not going to be the person who's going to jump on a bandwagon that you got to cut all this stuff out of your diet or whatever. And I actually hope to talk more about that coming up soon. But one of the things that I caution people about when you do research is that most people are going to be alarmists. It, it's going to be subtle. It's not going to necessarily be overt, but when you start researching a problem, if you are on a medical website like WebMD or something like that, you're likely to get some sort of straightforward information, but also stuff that's going to freak you out and make you rush to the doctor. That's the purpose of it everything in the world is some sort of advertising probably in a sense and so of course they want you to come have them help you with it and there's nothing wrong with that it's just that if you're trying to learn how to deal with things yourself and you want to not be an, a panicking person then those kind of places or those kinds of websites are maybe not as helpful as some other ones um, I usually will, like for instance, when Sophia was born, she had a big weird patch on her back that was about that big and it was super hairy, like the rest of her back was just a normal back, but then she had this hairy patch on her back and so I'm like, what the heck is this hairy patch? What should I think of this? So I start looking it up and if you don't know her story. We had her, she was an unassisted birth on purpose. We planned that. So I never took her to the doctor and um, we don't use pediatricians or anything. I'm not opposed to those. I just don't find them necessary or haven't. If I needed to, I would go consult a doctor. But my first step with her, her was to find out like, what is this thing and what does it mean? So I, I started looking and I don't even remember now what it's called, but when I see on um, medical websites, it's they describe what it is and then they start saying things like it could be a sign of spina bifida and I don't remember what all, but definitely alarmism, even though it's not overt, that's the place that it leads you. And I remember thinking, okay, so now I've heard that side. Now I'm going to look on purpose for people who actually have one of these things and see what they have to say about it. So then I find all this whole group of other people out there who says, yeah, I just call that my hairy patch and you know, it's not a big deal. And so I always try to find real life people who are dealing with it and see what they have to say, because usually that takes everything back down to a normal level. And as far as her situation goes, you can't even see it anymore. So I'm not sure what happened. It's just like gone now that she's three. So all that being said, one of my favorite, absolute favorite places to go is called, um, it's earthclinic.com. And on Earth Clinic, they have, people can ask questions or whatever, but they have like 
everything is categorized by either um, ailment or by treatment. So if you have like athlete's foot, for instance, you can look up athlete's foot and it's going to give you all the things that real people have said that they have tried and whether or not it worked. If you want to learn about, say, using ginger root, you could search for that and it will give you all the places that people have used ginger root, you know, what different problems that they had that they used it for. And it's all real people telling their real experiences with it and um, you can kind of ask questions people may or may not answer you but you can ask questions or for further information from them and I just find that place to be a really um, welcoming place to look for answers because there's nobody being an alarmist so I cannot recommend that website highly enough that is almost always one of the first places I look for information the next place I like to look is called herballegacy.com and that is Dr. Christopher's website or I guess his his legacy's website and so it tells um, you can search again by herbs or by um, ailments and it will just tell you all the things that he talked about and um, give the stories that he shared about those particular things and kind of point you in a direction. I buy most of my herbs from mountainroseherbs.com. They also sell books and they sell um, they sell jars and tools and things like that. They sell uh, seeds that you can actually plant for different herbs and um, I've always just ordered from them. I guess because, you know, I didn't even put this on the list, but I guess because when I um, when I was going to the School of Natural Healing or I was taking that course I got a, a discount with mountainroseherbs.com and then later I took or I had a year membership to a website called learningherbs.com and so I'll put that one down there too even though I forgot to put it on my list but it was they're a really great website too for um, learning about herbs that's why it's called learningherbs.com so both of those places gave a discount from Mountain Rose Herbs if you were members so um, I guess you can keep that in mind, but that's why I ordered from them. I also buy some of my herbs from the place that we get organic food from, which is Azure Standard. And I buy, sometimes I'll get them just like on Amazon if I'm already ordering something from them. So then that does bring me to my last point tonight, which is that I really like Amazon to learn about herbs because a lot of times when I've already kind of figured out something I want to try, I will go onto Amazon and I will see people who have bought those things like maybe capsules of it or bulk herbs and I read the reviews and I see what real people have said about using it like what has happened with their situation whatever they were dealing with has it improved um, there's just a wealth of information of people talking about their real life experiences with it on Amazon so Amazon is actually one of my favorite research tools of course it's not the place to learn about something um, in the first place, you have to have a starting point somewhere else, which is where these other websites come in. But if you've already kind of got an idea of something you're looking at, then Amazon is really helpful. Before we finish, I want to tell you a few things that I had to wrap my mind around when I first started learning about herbs. And that is that I think like when you go to the doctor, you kind of, or at least I did, I feel like I'm going to go in, they're going to tell me what my problem is and they're going to like match it like it's like a a matching game that this illness needs this pill and this illness needs this other pill and so I kind of had that in my head when it came to using herbs that you, this herb is for this and this herb is for that but it kind of it doesn't work that way like with herbs they're just like food they're they are food a lot of them don't taste very good so it's hard to eat them so we put them in capsules but that really is what it is so each herb has lots of different effects and it's helpful for lots of different ailments. And if you are using a formula to make um, some sort of a remedy, a lot of times you might not have something. And you can substitute a lot of different things for the, the missing ingredient because lots of different plants have the same effects. So it's a much more mixed bag when it comes with, to herbs. You can, you can, um, you have a lot of choices to do basically the same thing and for each ailment there's a ton of different herbs that can work for it so one of the things I like about that is just thinking about how God gave us right outside our doors so many plants no matter where you live there's so many 
things growing out there that you could actually be using and you don't have to live like in one place to have all the good stuff. The other thing I want to um, encourage you that I had to also kind of deal with in my own head was that there's not like a doing it wrong, you know, like um, when I first learned about making ointments, I wanted to know exactly how many drops of essential oil I needed to use and all that. And the lady at the School of Natural Healing is like, well, you just put some drops in. And if you don't think it's strong enough, put more in. <laughs> and if you think it's too strong, put in more oil. And, and I'm like, oh, it's much more willy nilly than I imagined it being. And so, you know, just to lighten up and don't worry that you're going to like mess everything up. You just, you just go with it. And if it doesn't work, you try again. And even if it's not exactly right, it's still going to be beneficial. So it's something to really have fun with. And I really hope that you guys, um, start learning and doing some of your own research. And we're going to continue talking about it as the month goes on. And I'm going to show you guys how to make a lot of things. So I hope that you keep watching and thank you guys for taking the time tonight to hang out with me and learn about some of my favorite books and some of my favorite websites. And if you're new, um, I'm just going to mention that Tom and I have eight children. We have a home business. Um, we homeschool. We like to have babies at home. Um, we're a real home-based family, I guess you could call us. And we make um, vlogs about our family and we do a monthly theme talking about a different topic. And this month it's going to be on healing at home. So if you haven't subscribed, I hope that you'll consider doing that. And for everyone else, I'm so glad to see you back today. And I'm really looking forward to visiting with all of you guys in the comments. So thank you for stopping by and I'll talk to you again very soon. Thank you.